Uh, great. It's such a pleasure to be here uh, to be representing our team, Lunascope. Uh, so our team is nearly 50 investigators, mostly domestic, but also uh, international uh, collaborators on our proposal. You can see the slew of institutions that we have uh, on the bottom of the slide. Uh, so we have 17 domestic institutions, including three MSIs or minority serving institutions and four foreign institutions that all work to put together the science and the uh, IDEA and the public engagement that we do as part of this proposal. Uh, I want to specifically call out our deputy PIs, Jack Mustard and Steve Parman, our IDEA liaison, Dan Abara, and our uh, public engagement liaison, Ingrid uh, Dalbar. So one of the things that we thought about very intentionally when we uh, came up with this uh, team was IDEA. And we wanted to infuse it throughout the structure of what would be Lunascope. And we thought about it in choosing our team and choosing our investigators and everything that we do for this proposal. Uh, so we blend very well our IDEA with our public engagement. And one of the, another thing we were very intentional about is ensuring that the uh, IDEA activities that we do would be something that could live beyond uh, this iteration of survey. So we partner with a lot of community members, uh, community partners, such as uh, Community Libraries of Providence, uh, RISD Space Design Team, uh, Museum of Natural History and, and Planetarium, to really capitalize on their already existing engagement with BIPOC communities. Uh, so we do things like have artists in residency at the city libraries, hands-on lunar observations, integrating lunar science content in existing uh, museums, as well as libraries. And part of what we're thinking about is the next generation of lunar scientists and engineers. So we, we incorporated um, undergraduate research internships that are paid through the leader, a well-established leadership alliance program that's led out of Brown. Um, so in addition to doing that every year, we sort of are pushing for graduate students and postdocs so we can really propagate uh, intentional diversification of our field through all levels. Uh, so on to um, the science that we're doing. So when we're thinking about the present day structure and distribution of resources and volatiles on the moon, one of the things that we're looking at is that to understand all of this, we must first understand the history of the moon and parts of uh, the magma ocean and how that developed and evolved, the influence of impacts and distributing uh, volatiles and resources, and of course, the thermal and chemical evolution of the moon. So we divided our science into five main investigations. And before I, all the five investigations are here, uh, magma oceans, magmatism, magnetism, volcanism and tectonism, volatiles and regolith and impacts. And for each of these themes, they're cross-disciplinary, they're thoroughly integrated. And also in each of them, we're doing... Uh, integration of numerical and analytical modeling. We're doing sample and geochemical analysis in the lab. And we're also doing uh, bringing in remote sensing data. So I'm gonna walk through briefly uh, the themes of uh, here and some of the high level activities that we'll be doing as part of each of these themes. Uh, so first is our uh, theme of magma oceans. This is led by uh, Chad Bukhari and Steve Parman. And one of the things that we, often think about the moon and the magma ocean is that when we had the magma ocean, we started crystallizing certain cumulates. As the magma ocean cooled, those cumulates settled out. And this goes on and on and on, forming the north acidic crust that we have on the moon, uh, geochemical composition, such as the creep rich material. However, we often view this as a very simple uh, scenario where everything is sequential. So. Uh, overturn of the mantle doesn't start until the magma ocean ends. Convection doesn't start until uh, overturn happens. And what we're finding out as we look at the more complex rheology and exactly how the magma ocean crystallizes, you probably had a lot of these happening and overlapping. And so what we want to get to is a more comprehensive model of how the magma ocean evolves and what are the implications of that evolution through time. And uh, that's this part. 
Uh, the second part uh, of the themes that we'll be doing is magnetism. This is uh, this theme is led by myself and Sonia Tiku at Stanford. And one of the things that we're doing here is trying to understand what sort of magnetic contamination uh, could be retained in samples that are returned to Earth for analysis. In particular, there is a lot of um, controversy and questions concerning uh, samples that have been returned that have identified this uh, what appears to be an internally generated magnetic field for the moon. Uh, there's been some question as whether on whether it's internally generated or whether we're seeing transient fields or other contamination that's been imparted as they are transported back to Earth. And so that's what we're going to be getting at with this investigation, as well as looking at lunar crustal magnetic anomalies. Um, and we're hoping to also get out of here some guidelines for our sample handling operations for those samples that we're most interested in uh, for analyzing magnetically. Uh, our third theme is volcanism and tectonism. This is led by Chris Hubert and Harriet Lau, both at Brown. And what we're looking at here is understanding the history of volcanism on the moon. In particular, trying to understand what that's telling us about the distribution of volatiles within the moon and how that might have evolved spatially and temporally. Uh, we're also looking at long wavelength uh, geophysical evolution. Uh, so one of the outstanding problems for the moon is this notion of how do we get to the present Earth-Moon distance and orbital parameters that we have for both bodies. And after Harriet Lau has extensively looked at this for the Earth in particular, and it seems like the solution has to do potentially with tidal dissipation in the moon. So we may learn something about the evolution of the magma ocean by trying to match present day orbital parameters uh, as we sort of look through for different interior configurations and changes for the uh, interior of the moon. The fourth theme that we're looking at is volatiles. Uh, this is trying to quantify uh, the amount of magmatic degassing that would have happened for some of the samples that we've analyzed um, uh, for from return samples, as well as trying to use this to characterize what different reservoirs of volatiles and resources may exist in the moon. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at here is uh, the slew of volcanic glass uh, classifications. There's about 25. I think so far we've mostly, Brown has mostly focused on those that have been characterized by titanium. So we're going to look at all of them, all of those characterizations now, and try to come up with a more comprehensive history and understanding of magmatic degassing and volatile content in the moon, as well as trying to um, use remote sensing to and uh, some improved uh, soil analyses. And um, we're going to uh, look at some uh, analog samples and trying to understand what sort of water content retention uh, would look like in soils of different maturity on the moon. And then lastly, regolith and impacts. So as we return samples from the moon, one of the things that becomes really important is trying to understand the history of those samples. So we're going through and we're picking up material that has been on the surface of the moon for several billion years, most likely. And what we're doing is we're integrating I-cell modeling with uh, crater terrain evolution modeling to try to understand what happens after an impact and where is material distributed? So for example, when we're thinking about SPA collecting samples from there, we're trying to understand what happened to that SPA material and what did later impacts do to the surface. Uh, and so this will also give us great information on the mega regolith structure of the moon. Uh, additionally, we're gonna be looking at lunar swirls and uh, regolith cross mantle uh, relations by looking at the different compositions that we see across the moon. Uh, as part of Lunascope, we are hiring for several positions. We have several postdoc opportunities. Uh, we're also looking for a uh, program manager uh, that has somewhat of a science background and a public engagement and IDA specialist. And this top line is not part of Lunascope in particular, but we're also uh, advertising a planetary science position, a tenure track assistant professorship. And I'm happy to talk about any one of these uh, during this conference. And that concludes my presentation.